12. Julianne March Passengers were so worried about a flight attendant's behavior during a United Express flight from Chicago to South Bend, Indiana, one day back in 2022, that they started to record the woman. The stewardess in question, 49-year-old Julianne March, seemed like she was drunk. Passenger Aaron Sherb told the South Bend Tribune that she didn't make eye contact with any of the travelers as they got on the plane and seemed like she was leaning up against the galley. During the standard security announcement that typically happens at the start of every flight, her speech was incredibly slurred. March also repeatedly bumped into seats as she walked up and down the aisles to check that the overhead compartment bins were closed. Perhaps one of the most concerning moments of the flight happened when a passenger had to fasten the flight attendant's seatbelt after noticing that it wasn't on correctly. March then stayed in her seat the entire flight and seemed like she was passed out. After the plane landed safely in South Bend, a passenger voiced his concerns to one of the pilots. Two uniformed officers eventually came onto the plane, and as soon as March saw them, she started crying. When one of the officers asked her what city she thought she was in, she said Chicago. Her blood alcohol level tested at 0.204, five times the limit for airline employees. So she was charged with misdemeanor intoxication. A passenger later said that United offered him compensation when he called the company out for the incident in a tweet but he felt the entire flight of passengers deserved to be reimbursed since everyone's safety was put at risk. He also said that he hoped the company didn't fire March and that he wished they offered her whatever help she might need for her issues. 11. Oscar Mayorga A concerned citizen in Eustis, Florida called the police on the 4th of July back in 2022 after seeing a squad car from the nearby Apopka Police Department driving crazy and running stop signs. An officer from the Eustis Police Department then came out and pulled the vehicle over. The Apopka officer inside the vehicle, 25-year-old Oscar Mayorga, said that he was on his way to work and that he wasn't feeling well. He reportedly smelled very strongly of alcohol and had an open can of beer in the center console cup holder of the car. Mayorga initially claimed that he hadn't been drinking, instead blaming his seizure medication for the unusual behavior, according to a police report. He also allegedly told the officer who pulled him over that he took three Benadryl pills for his allergies, prompting the officer to ask him why he'd taken that much, knowing he had to go into work. After initially claiming that the beer can was from three days earlier, he eventually admitted to drinking three cans before beginning the drive to work that day. A photo taken at the scene showed the beverage in Mayorga's vehicle. With an alcohol content of 7.5%, the Florida-made IPA was a lot stronger than most beers. This helped explain why Mayorga's blood alcohol level tested at 0.391, almost five times the legal limit for driving. By the time he was put on a stretcher, Mayorga was becoming noticeably less coherent and wasn't able to answer the questions police were asking him. He was later charged with DUI and placed on administrative leave pending the results of an in-depth internal investigation. 10. Rebecca Conrad In early 2022, 48-year-old United States postal worker Rebecca Conrad crashed her mail truck into the garage of a home in Chesterton, Indiana. She denied accusations that she'd drunk any alcohol that day, but responding officers found seven empty bottles of banana-flavored schnapps inside her purse, and her blood alcohol level tested twice the legal limit for driving. Conrad eventually pleaded guilty to a misdemeanor operating while intoxicated charge, and was given a 60-day suspended jail sentence for her actions, along with five days of community service. She also lost her driver's license for a month and was ordered to undergo a lengthy substance abuse evaluation. Just five months after dealing with her first OWI charge, a person called the police and reported seeing a postal worker fall out of a truck as it slowly veered off the road. A responding officer arrived and found Conrad lying in the road with multiple injuries. She allegedly claimed she had a seizure while driving, 
but the officer could smell alcohol on her breath and noticed her eyes were watery and bloodshot. Her blood alcohol level was 0.336 this time, over four times the legal limit. Conrad was charged with felony OWI with a prior conviction within seven years. It doesn't seem like she learned her lesson the first time. 9. Peyton Michael Paddock 24-year-old Peyton Michael Paddock was a special education teacher at a high school in Jefferson, Iowa, when fellow employees reported his abnormal behavior to the principal, Brian Phillips, one morning back in 2022. Police officers were called to the scene and gave the man a breathalyzer test, which revealed a blood alcohol level of 0.255, three times the legal limit for driving in many states. Surveillance footage also seemed to show Paddock staggering as he went into the school that day. He was charged with operating while intoxicated, as well as public intoxication. He was also fired from his job. Paddock initially pleaded not guilty to the charges, but ultimately admitted to a first offense OWI charge. The judge gave him 180 days in jail, with all but two days suspended, along with one year of probation. He was also ordered to undergo a substance abuse evaluation and complete any recommended treatment afterwards. 8. Robin Comey After the start of the COVID-19 pandemic, drinking on the job allegedly became such a huge problem among Connecticut lawmakers that House Speaker Matt Ritter publicly disapproved of the behavior. During a press briefing, he said that both he and House Majority Leader Jason Rojas had addressed the issue many times, warning lawmakers to stop drinking during legislative sessions in the parking garage and inside their personal offices. It's no secret that legislators in Connecticut and other places in the U.S. drink during lengthy debates and late nights, but it quickly got out of hand, according to Ritter, who warned that there would be significant consequences if the problem persisted. News of the excessive drinking started to surface in 2021, after State Representative Robin Comey struggled to speak coherently while discussing an early childhood education bill in the middle of a debate. She later issued an official apology, stating that a combination of anxiety, exhaustion, and drinking wine with her dinner that night affected her behavior. Comey said that she didn't drive home after the debate and insisted that the way she acted was completely out of character. This claim became questionable in early 2023, when the 55-year-old lawmaker flipped her car in Hartford after a meeting with colleagues at a bar. Security footage of the accident showed her sedan crashing into a dumpster and landing upside down in the middle of the street. Comey then crawled out from the vehicle and waited for police to get there and help. Body cam footage from the authorities showed Comey telling a responding officer that she didn't know how her car rolled over while she laughed nervously. She underwent several sobriety tests and performed poorly. In the video, she was seen stumbling over her own feet and was heard slurring her words. The officer asked Comey to take nine steps in a straight line. After just seven steps, she insisted she had finished the exercise. She was told to repeat the test, and once again, she stopped after only seven steps. Comey was also unable to stand on one foot for more than a second and showed telltale signs of being drunk. Her eyes twitched during another sobriety test. She was unable to follow the officer's pen light without moving her head, and her blood alcohol level tested at 0.1446 above the legal limit for driving in Connecticut. She was soon taken into custody on suspicion of DWI. In keeping with his promise to discipline lawmakers for excessive drinking, Ritter removed Comey from her representative leadership roles. She released an apology and promised to get treatment for alcohol addiction. Her DWI case is still ongoing. 7. James Clifton A federal officer, was working at the Buffalo Niagara International Airport in Buffalo, New York, started to get suspicious one morning when a JetBlue pilot failed to make proper eye contact or move out of the way for others at a security checkpoint. The officer told police, who went on board the pilot's aircraft right before it was scheduled to take off at 6 a.m. 
They asked Clifton to step onto the jet bridge for a moment, where they performed an eye movement test. He instantly failed and confessed that he drank the night before, according to a police report. The pilot initially said he had only five or six drinks, but then said he had seven or eight. Police also wrote in the report that Clifton's speech and manner of walking showed signs that he was very impaired. His blood alcohol level test registered at 0.17, over four times the legal limit for pilots and twice the legal limit for driving. He was taken down to the police station where he underwent additional questioning and was then returned to the airport so he could catch a quick flight home. Clifton's co-pilot told police officers that the two had gone out to dinner the night before and that Clifton stayed behind at the restaurant when the co-pilot went back to his hotel room. After missing the airport shuttle the next morning, Clifton got an Uber to the airport. In accordance with JetBlue's strict zero alcohol policy, he was fired from his job. And the incident also sparked a Federal Aviation Authority investigation. 6. Jody Whitehead After noticing a counselor acting strange one morning in 2021, a high school principal in Farmington, Arkansas called 911. He told officers that 43-year-old Jody Whitehead was stumbling and swaying when she walked in that day and seemed to be leaning against a wall to keep her balance. When the officers asked the employees to bring Whitehead down to the office so they planned to speak with her, she reportedly needed help simply walking down a staircase. Whitehead allegedly became agitated when the cops started to explain why they pulled her aside to talk privately. They noticed that her eyes were glossy and bloodshot, and they smelled a distinct odor they suspected was alcohol, which grew stronger as the officers got closer to her. In addition to becoming frustrated easily, she was also demanding and slow to answer all questions. Staff members said it was nothing like her typical outgoing and talkative personality. According to a police report, Whitehead claimed she was on some medication that could be affecting her behavior. She refused to undergo a field sobriety test that day, told the officers to contact her husband with any questions they might have, and was uncooperative when she was arrested. Whitehead was assisted into a squad car and booked on a charge of public intoxication. She pleaded not guilty and later resigned from her job with the school. 5. Robert Morris Levy In 2015 and 2016, VA administrators in Fayetteville, Arkansas, heard complaints suspecting that one of the agency's main doctors, Robert Morris Levy, was drunk on the job. He entered a treatment program after the second incident and came back to work several months later. Levy passed drug and alcohol tests, only for investigators to later discover he was taking a substance that enables a person to achieve a state of intoxication but is not detectable in routine drug and alcohol testing. This drug is referred to as 2M2B. The substance isn't actually meant for human consumption. The doctor was let go from his position back in 2018 for continuing to come to work in an intoxicated state. An investigation into Levy's conduct revealed that three U.S. military veterans died from cancer while being treated under his care. In one case, he told a patient that nothing abnormal showed up in his biopsy, when in reality, he was suffering from prostate cancer. The two other patients were diagnosed and treated for the wrong type of cancer. Investigators also found evidence that Levy changed the patient's files to make it seem as if another doctor agreed with the diagnosis. In 2019, Levy was charged with 12 counts of wire fraud 12 counts of mail fraud, four counts of making false statements, and three counts of involuntary manslaughter. He ultimately took a plea deal and received 20 years in federal prison, followed by three years of supervised release. Four, Ryan Dixon. When it comes to hiring new workers, some candidates do a good job at weeding themselves out. Ryan Dixon happened to be one of those people. In 2016, he was hoping to land a job as a taxi driver with a Des Moines-based company called Trans Iowa. He drove to the interview drunk. Dispatcher Barbara Freeborn told local news station KCCI that Dixon pulled into the parking lot 
and crashed straight into two taxi drivers' vehicles, damaging both of them. Drunk or not, most people would be embarrassed enough to leave the scene, or they would at least realize they weren't going to get the job and wouldn't bother with the interview. But Dixon still staggered his way into the building. When Freeborn asked how she could help him, he didn't seem to understand anything she said. Police were eventually called to the scene, and they tried to have Dixon perform a field sobriety test. He was allegedly too drunk to comply, and while it wasn't even 9.30 in the morning, a breathalyzer said his blood alcohol content was 0.273, three times the legal driving limit for Iowa. According to a police report, Dixon had been drinking until 2 o'clock in the morning the night before the interview. He went to the hospital because of his drinking, was released, and drank again at around 8 o'clock in the morning, right before the interview. Sadly, it sounds like Dixon may have struggled with alcoholism on a level that extends beyond standard recklessness. Hopefully, he got whatever help he needed because he definitely didn't get the job. 3. Donna Howard In 2015, while working as a home health assistant in Staten Island, New York, 29-year-old Donna Howard was accused of stealing her 93-year-old client's credit card and using it to purchase alcohol at a bodega. She also allegedly drank the liquor on the job. The client, who reported Howard after realizing something was wrong, said that the suspect was assigned to her as a temporary aide, as a fill-in for her regular caretaker. She said she noticed Howard was acting kind of funny, but it wasn't until later on that she realized her aide was impaired. The elderly woman said that Howard acted over-familiar and shared too many details about her personal life. After borrowing $10 for food and leaving to go on lunch, the suspect returned with a can of Four loco, which has both caffeine and alcohol, and is known for getting people drunk very fast. According to the victim, Howard most likely stole the credit card while she used the bathroom. When she came out, Howard was gone. That's when the woman remembered that Howard told her she put the change from the $10 she borrowed in the senior citizen's pocketbook. Suspecting that something wasn't right, the victim went through her belongings and realized her credit card was missing. She called her daughter, who came over and found the four loco in the fridge in a paper bag. Court documents say that Howard was captured on surveillance footage using the victim's credit card. When questioned, she admitted to being drunk and high on pills during her time at the victim's home, and to using the card. Authorities charged Howard with fourth-degree grand larceny, fourth- and fifth-degree criminal possession of stolen property, and petty larceny. She refused to comment when contacted by news outlets, but a law enforcement source said that the suspect had been convicted of drunk driving and robbery back in 2002. She was granted youthful offender status back then, which meant the case was sealed, explaining why it didn't show up on a background check done by her employer, who clarified that the company has a thorough vetting process. A company spokesperson said that they suspended Howard immediately after learning of the allegations against her. 2. Tegan Leonhardt One day in May 2022, a high school administrator in Marin County, California went into a classroom. They quickly became concerned for a 46-year-old English teacher named Tegan Leonhardt. Believing that Leonhardt was either drunk or high, the administrator took her out of the classroom and called the police. Leonhardt initially denied the allegations, but an alcohol screening revealed that her blood alcohol content was over three times the legal limit. A drug recognition expert with the San Rafael Police Department said that she was also under the influence of marijuana and several prescription drugs. When confronted about the results, Leonhardt admitted to drinking that morning. Authorities charged her with public intoxication as well as child endangerment. She was released from jail after being booked and processed and was placed on administrative leave from her job. At the time, Leonhardt had been teaching at the school for over a decade. A school spokesperson declined to comment, stating that that district doesn't discuss personal matters. 1. Nicholas Gifford Back in 2022, when officers with the Jacksonville, Florida Sheriff's Office saw SWAT officer Nicholas Gifford's patrol car 
veering back and forth during a drive to the agency's gun range, they confronted their colleague. Gifford said he was drunk and confessed to drinking vodka before he went to sleep around 3.30 in the morning. Just a few hours before his shift was scheduled to start, he also admitted to having a serious drinking problem and confessed that he had come to work drunk multiple times in the past. Three hours later, he took a breathalyzer test and blew a .316, putting him in violation of the agency's zero-tolerance alcohol policy. Gifford was immediately fired from his job, but he appealed the decision through the city's civil service board, which reviewed the matter and concluded that the decision to fire Gifford was manifestly unjust. The board voted in favor of reinstating him on the condition that he take occasional breathalyzer tests to prove that he's sober while working. Not everyone was happy about the decision. The sheriff's office had no control and had no choice but to obey the ruling. Civil Service Board Chair Jim Register told the First Coast News that he voted against reinstating Gifford. Knowing that the SWAT officer had gotten away with coming to work drunk in the past, Register had deep concerns about the decision to put him back behind the wheel of a squad car. But enough board members were swayed by Gifford's moving testimony, which included a promise not to risk his livelihood or put others in danger anymore. He said his life was unmanageable with alcohol and that he had been scared straight. Hopefully, he meant his words and will stick by them in the future. Thanks for watching. If you caught a coworker who you liked and who was a good employee getting drunk on the job, would you report it, address it directly with them, or stay out of it completely? Let me know in the comments below.